welcome you again in the classes of evs academy this would be the last class of this crash course series and here we are currently discussing the miscellaneous topics we have discussed already the thermodynamics remote sensing now i am going to discuss about the earthquake because in every consecutive year at least in every or two papers there would be one question from this topic and that question is very very easy theoretical question you can easily answer it if you know the concept of the different waves present in the earthquake so that we are going to discuss and then the our syllabus would be fully completed so the table of contents that we have to cover here that you can see we have to discuss about the seismic waves which are also called as earthquake waves that we are going to discuss how the earthquake waves are generated that we are discuss types of the seismic waves or earthquake waves in that we have to discuss the two main types body waves surface waves body waves two types are p waves s waves primary and secondary waves and surface waves l waves are type of law waves and the rayleigh waves so these two waves we have to discuss and how the seismic waves help us to understand about the geography or inter internal structure of the earth that we will also discuss so let's start with the seismic wave first so what are the seismic waves or what are the earthquake waves that we have to discuss here <clears throat> so if you look at the earth surface the earth surface is not fully solid while it is made up of multiple seismic plates and these seismic plates are floating above the lava that is the main thing and problem of this earth surface you can understand because it is not made up of a single plate it is not a solid plate there are multiple plates which are placed uh, just the side another uh, one of the side another and these are floating on the lava surface second thing is these play, uh, plates are always kept constant by the frictional force present between these plates so suppose this is one seismic plate and this one is another seismic plate so both the plates are somewhere attached between this due to the frictional force present between the two plates now the problem here is when the external force on any plate exits above than this frictional force so immediately there would be slide movement between the two plates the slide the plates will slide one above another like this and whenever there is slide movement takes place between the two different seismic waves seismic plates then there would be generation of earthquake due to the generation of the seismic waves or earthquake waves so here this is the seismic seismic means relating to the earthquake and other vibration of the earth and its crust so there would be vibration between the two plates because of the sliding movement of these two plates seismic waves are waves of energy that travel through the earth layers and are a result of earthquakes volcanic eruption magma movement large landslides large human made explosion so cause of this pressure can be anything as well due to all these things earthquakes can be generated easily due to human explosion maybe maybe any huge volcanic eruption or maybe magma movement out of these a uh, joint of the plates these all can lead to the earthquake seismic wave formation the refraction and reflection of the seismic waves is used for research into the structure of the earth's interior that we will see in the last of this particular chapter the term seismic waves and earthquake waves are often used interchangeably with each other seismic waves means earthquake waves or earthquake wave means seismic waves both are the same thing i hope you understood this seismic waves topic just give me a second after the seismic waves we have the next topic this is about the how the earthquake waves are produced so i have told you the earth layer is not made up of a single solid rock it is made up of the multiple seismic plates and along the seismic plates we have the faults faults means sharp break up point between the crustal layer of the crust of the earth and sliding movement between these different plates causes the earthquake 
rock layers along a fault tend to move in opposite direction due to the force exerted on them but are held in place by counteracting frictional force exerted by the overlying rock strata so as i have told you both the two plates are facing some kind of external force here but this external force is not big enough to overcome with the frictional force present between the two plates whenever this external force exceeding this frictional force present between the two plates ultimately the sliding movement will start and this will lead to the total earthquake formation here so this is how earthquake waves are produced here you can see in this particular image these two are the earthquake scenario here both the slides are present here this is one seismic slide and this one is the another seismic plate and whenever this focus point will be created whenever there would be slide movement between the two plates here you can see so this particular slide movement will lead to the formation of earthquake so this point where the slide movement starts that particular point is called as focus or hypocenter of the earthquake and that point which is just above that surface of the earth which is just above this focus point that is called as epicenter so here you can see this is the epicenter of the earthquake and this is the focus of the earthquake so why this focus and epicenter important because this will lead the total intensity of the earthquake so that particular point which is near to focus will place the highest amount of earthquake and this is the epicenter so also that place in the earth surface which is present to epicenter will place the highest intensity of the earthquake and the highest destruction as well so here you can see the pressure on the rock layers builds over a period of time and overcomes the frictional force resulting in a sudden movement generating shock waves seismic waves that travel in all directions the point where the energy is released is called the focus or hypocenter of an earthquake the point on the surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter an instrument called seismograph records the waves reaching the surface and the seismograph is used to check the intensity of earthquake how much it is higher would be the intensity of the earthquake so higher would be the destruction as well and that you can know with the help of seismograph so i hope focus hypocenter and epicenter is clear to you now let's move ahead types of the seismic waves or earthquake waves so i have told you the seismic waves are divided in two types one is called as the body waves another one is the called as surface waves body waves as in the names itself you can see body waves moves along the whole body of the earth internal body of the earth so that would be the body waves body waves are also of two types p waves s waves this one and this one and after that there would be arrival of the surface waves which moves along the surface of the earth only not internally so here you can see this particular graph is showing a earthquake caused at any area and this is the seismograph record so here you can see seismograph earlier not showing any vibration suddenly whenever there would be earthquake starts there would be felt of p waves first and then after some time there would be s waves in the graph here you can see then after some time there would be surface waves here you can see now this p wave generation is telling arrival time of the earthquake why p wave is coming first that simply means p waves travel faster faster as compared to s waves and as compared to the surface waves as well while the s waves is having lesser speed than the p waves but higher speed than the surface waves that's why s waves is recorded in second place and last waves which are recorded here are the surface waves which are slowest slowest moving moving waves among the all waves the interesting thing is that the p waves and s waves because these are traveling through the body of earth there is least destruction caused by the p and s waves the least destruction would be by p waves 
and then after that s waves the highest destruction or the destructive waves are only surface waves these waves so if you know the arrival time of p wave so we have this time period window to warn the people here you can see. so the p waves are used as a warning sign as well for the generation of the earthquake if p waves are recorded in any seismograph so immediately the people are warned for the coming surface wave so you should on that time move out of the building move out of the any situation you are there to the open ground to protect yourself so p waves are also used as a warning waves for the earthquake because p waves s waves both are non destructive in nature only there would be record of the fluctuation here but main destruction or destruction is mainly caused by the surface waves only which travels on the surface of the earth so this is the our earth so the body waves the p waves s waves will was this is the uh, hypercent hypocenter or focus of the earth this would be your epicenter just above this particular line this is this is your epicenter so the earthquake will move along the body these are the body waves s waves and p waves in all direction it will move while the surface waves only moves in the surface like this up to some extent so these surface waves are most destructive because majority of the human related things are on the surface we are not living underground so there is no problem with the inside waves which are created underground the main problem is with only the surface waves so i hope the both waves body waves and p waves are clear to you now one by one details of all the waves we have to discuss here let's start with the body waves so here you can see this is the body waves body waves are generated due to the release of energy at the focus point and move in all direction it means below the ground traveling through the interior of earth this point is important hence the name is given to the body waves so these body waves are also used for the understanding of the internal structure of the earth surface so which we can understand the inside of the earth so there are two types of body waves one is called as p waves primary waves because these comes first in any earthquake then we have the secondary waves because arrival time of the secondary waves is more than the arrival time of the primary waves that's why this is secondary wave primary waves are also called as longitudinal waves because of the longitudinal movement nature of these particular waves wave propagation is similar to the sound waves here in the primary waves the s waves are also called as transverse waves because the wave propagation is similar to the ripples of the surface of water not like sound wave so we will see the photograph of these two waves movement as well in the upcoming slide then things would be more clear before going to that let's see the detail of the primary waves if i show you the movement side you can see these are these are the longitudinal waves the movement is in the longitudinal way and this below below image this is ripples in the water surface this is kind of movement you can see in the secondary wave so these are also called as transverse waves these are the s waves and this is the longitudinal movement movement in the longitudinal way so here you can see there is a intense then there would be release then there would be again intense contraction then again there would be release such type of longitudinal waves are formed which are also called as longitudinal wave or p wave so i will suggest you to see a video youtube video you can find out of the movement of the different types of earth waves earthquake waves so that video is about only 3 or 4 minute length i will suggest you to see that video very strongly i will suggest to understand the movement of the longitudinal transverse waves and other waves because without seeing that video that video is 3d animation video without a uh, video without that video you cannot imagine how the movement takes place here this is only showing the movement but on that video it is showing the movement in 3d image 
so definitely see that image for the better understanding video for the better understand now we were discussing the details of the primary waves p waves primary waves are called so because they are fastest among the seismic waves and hence are recorded first on the seismograph p waves are also called as the longitudinal waves because the displacement of the medium is in the same direction now this is important medium <coughs> displacement of any medium or medium is in the same direction as or the opposite direction parallel to the direction of propagation of wave so this kind of movement then again there would be construction movement then again there would be release movement so this is the direction of wave so here you can see displacement of the medium is also in the same direction or in the opposite direction or at least parallel to the wave that's why these are called as the longitudinal waves these are also called as compressional waves because there is always compression of the wave in some region and refraction or rarefaction of the wave at some region so this is rarefaction region this is compression comp compression region so because they produce compression and rarefaction when traveling through a medium or these are also called as the pressure waves as well how many names are here you can see longitudinal waves compressional waves pressure waves because they produce increases and decreases in pressure in the medium that's why these are also called as pressure waves so three names you have to remember under the primary waves p waves create density difference in the material leading to stretching that is the rarefaction and squeezing that we have seen compression of the material so i hope with the image the things are more clear to you so the other names of p waves are longitudinal waves compressional waves and pressure waves so i hope this is clear to you